Hello, my name is TJ Grant and today we're going to be working on this animation. So a couple of the things that we're going to be covering today is first of all, we're going to be bringing in this beer mug graphic. We're going to be animating it across the screen. We're going to learn some principles of animation as well. Then we're going to be filling up the mug with some uh, beer and using shape animation and tools inside of Fusion to do that. And then lastly, we're going to be adding in a particle system to make that fun overflowing head of the beer over the glass. Down in the description below, there is a link to the source files. Go ahead and grab those. And when you're ready, let's get started. So starting in a brand new comp, let's add in our beer mug graphic first. So right click, add tool, go to IO, and then click on loader. And choose the QP underscore beer mug dot PNG as our graphic and click open. So let's take a look at this graphic. We can take this node and drag it up into the viewport and we can see what this looks like. All right. So the first thing we want to do to this graphic for right now is under import, go ahead and click on the post multiply by alpha. And all that's going to do is smooth out the aliasing on the graphic here. Let's uncheck it so you can see it's very uh, uh, pixelated and that's because the alpha just needs to be multiplied. Okay. So once you do that, let's move on to the next step, which is we're going to attach this to a 3D plane. So right click, add tool, go to 3D and go to image plane. All right. And let's connect the two. And now if we look at this node in this viewport here, you'll notice that now it's in a 3D environment. So what we want to do is I'm going to animate this, but I want to move the pivot point of this object. I'm going to move it down here because the way that I'm going to animate it, I need the pivot right here. And I'll show you why I want it down there when we go to animate this. But for now, let's see how we can move this pivot point to that corner. So in the tab here, you'll notice there is a little transform icon here. So go ahead and click on that. And down here where it says pivot, expand this tree. And now I can move just the pivot point of where I want the actual uh, graphic to be uh, manipulated from, right? So uh, if you're coming from After Effects, you know that all your layers have anchor points, okay? But in Fusion, it's called a pivot point. So this is exactly what we're going to be doing. So if you look, like right now, if I were to just click on any of these arrows, it's going to move the graphic. Okay, from that point, and that's where my rotation is going to happen. But I don't want any of those things. I want to move it to right here. So that's why we're going to move the pivot point. So in order to move these and know how to move the pivot point, I'm going to need to know which one of these axes to move it on. So in all 3D software, pretty much like 99% of them, this transform locator, the red will always represent the x-axis, the green will be the y-axis, and the blue will always be the z-axis or the z-axis. All right. So knowing that, I'm going to choose the x-axis first, the red one, and I'm going to move it in a negative value. All right. And I'm going to move it just to this edge. All right, it doesn't have to be exact, just close enough. And now I want to move it on the y-axis, which is the green one. I'm also going to move that in a negative value and bring it down to this corner here. All right. So if I pan around 
Again, inside the viewport, if I'm holding down the Alt key and the middle mouse button, if I hold those two down, it's going to allow me to rotate the viewport. If I hold down just the middle mouse button, I'll be able to pan. And if I hold down Control and scroll the mouse wheel forward and back, that's going to allow me to zoom in and out. Okay. So now that we have that on that corner, let's move this graphic up on top of the grid. You don't really have to, but there's a good reason why we want to do this, just because it's easier to see and uh, if you're in the three coming from a 3D world, it's kind of annoying having a grid uh, going into your model like that. So let's just place this on the floor of the uh, world, so to speak. So grabbing that Y axis again, the green one, let's just move it up. All right. And it doesn't have to be exact. Just put it somewhat on top of the grid. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is I need to get a canvas in here that's going to allow me to uh, place this mug onto the final shot. Okay. So the way that we're going to do that is first, I'm going to add another 3D object, which is a Merge 3D. Now, when you're using 3D objects and you want to use multiple objects and have them in the same scene, you're going to want to merge them all together. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. We're going to take this plane and we're going to put it into the Merge 3D. Now, all that did is it'll look exactly the same, but it's setting it up so that we can add other objects into this scene here. So if we right click and go to add tool and go to 3D and go to camera 3D. Well, now when I put these two together, this is going to enable me to have two objects into this scene that this scene could, I can manipulate it. So everything's tied to that, or I can come into here and move the camera or move the image plane, but it's all in the same scene now. So what we need to do now is we're going to move this 3D environment into a 2D canvas. And we're going to do that by adding a render node. So go to right click, go to add tool, 3D, and go to render a 3D. And let's connect these two. And let's drag the render 3D node into this viewport over here. And you will see absolutely nothing. And the reason for that is because the camera is clipping off this graphic and it's sitting right at the origin point. Okay, because the camera is going to be what is used to frame the graphics from this 3D environment so that the renderer can see what it needs to render out. So let's take the camera, make sure this node is selected, take your camera and on the Z axis, Remember, I'm trying to move this away. Click and let's move it. Okay. You'll notice that now we can start to see this inside this render node. Okay. And I'm going to move this up and I'll move it back a little bit more. And that's it. So now that we've got our basic scene set up, we are ready to begin animating this mug. So now we're ready to animate this mug. And the idea is that we're going to move the mug from off this side of the screen and into the center. But the way that we're going to do it is we're going to do it rather than going from point A to point B, we're going to apply a couple principles of animation. Now, typically when you see animations that are cartoony like this, you'll notice that a lot of times they will move from here and then it'll go possibly pretty fast and then begin to ultimately slow down as what's known as an ease out. Okay, you're easing the motion to the stop. But instead of doing that, what we're going to apply is a overlapping motion and an anticipation, okay? So those are two more principles of animation, the ease in and ease out, 
the anticipation, and the overlapping motion. And the way that we're going to do this is let's go ahead and get this set up for animating on the first frame. So with the x-axis, or the red arrow, we're going to move it off to the side. And what we're going to do inside of the image plane node is click on your transform tab. And in Fusion, you can either set a keyframe by right-clicking on this X offset and clicking on Animate. Or, if you'll notice this light gray bar right here, you could double-click it. And when it turns green, that's telling Fusion, I'm going to start animating this property. Okay, So we're going to be animating both the X offset and since I want to apply some Z rotation, again, that rotation because of the blue arrow, I'm going to be animating it, rotating it along there. I can come over to the Z rotation property, right click on the bar, and click on animate. Okay, so that's again just telling Fusion I'm going to be animating those two properties. Okay, so now that we're on frame zero. Fusion has set a keyframe on both of these values. So working with just the X offset, let's go over to, let's just start with frame 20 because we're gonna be adjusting these values later. But for right now, when you're animating, you're just trying to get the overall motion and we'll work on the, the feeling and the timing and the rhythm after we've kind of blocked everything out, okay? So we're going to take the x-axis and we're just going to move it over into the center of this viewport. Okay? And if you look, I'm going to scrub this time frame over just a little bit. And you'll notice, if you can see it, there's a green bar here and now a green bar here. That's Fusion letting you know that there are two keyframes now. Okay? So if we look at it, we'll play it. It's not going to play in real time because it's got to uh, put everything into the RAM. So go back and let's play it in real time. Great. It moved from point A to point B. And it's really boring. So this is how we're going to add life to this inanimate object. And we're going to do that using the spline editor. So come over to your tab over here and click on spline. Now you'll notice there is nothing there and that's because I have nothing selected over here. But you'll notice that my image plane 3D is shown here and the X offset which refers to this value that we're animating and the Z rotation which also refers to this value are both here. So if you click on this, it's going to show you both. Okay, you'll notice that the red or the X offset is in red and the Z rotation is in purple. Okay, and there's nothing value there. So let's just uncheck the Z rotation and let's just focus on the X offset. Now, if you are not familiar with a spline editor or a graph editor, this is one of the most powerful tools for an animator. Working in uh, motion graphics, working in 3D, uh, working pretty much in the digital realm. Okay, uh, if you're doing him by you know frame by frame hand drawn animations, uh, it's going to be a little bit different. But since we're working in this format, the spline editor is the most powerful thing that you really need to learn. Okay. And the way it works is that you're going to have full control over your movement. All right, The spline editor is going to help you with your arcs. They're going to help you with your ease-ins and your ease-outs. It's going to help you fine-tune your timing, your rhythm. It will also save you some ways uh, or save you some time by using it so that you won't have to use as many keyframes once you get used to working with splines. All right, so for this example, right now, you'll notice it goes from point A to point B. And this editor 
shows that this value here at frame one is going straight down to that value there. And that's because uh, there is no arc, okay? The way the spline editor works is that these are in fact curves. If I click on this point, you'll notice that a handle has shown up. And if I move the handle, now I can start to mess with the speed by which the object is going to move from this point to this keyframe. All right, from this keyframe to this keyframe. Okay. The other thing to notice too is that you have the zero, which refers to this number here. Okay, so uh, since we're moving down to pretty much zero, that value is down there. And since we moved the object initially in the positive x-axis, which is to the right, this is a positive value. Alternately, if I moved it to the left, you'll notice that the curve goes down below, all right, or to the negative values. Okay, so remember, you're working with both positive and negative, all right? But let's get back to the curve. So the way the curve works is that whenever you have a very sharp, whenever you see a curve go straight into a keyframe, it means that the there's not going to be any slowdown, okay? It's going to go straight to it, all right? If I take this curve and I start to line it up with this line, okay, or with the next keyframe, that means this motion is now going to go very quickly and then begin to slowly get into that keyframe, okay? it's basically ramping down all right if because it's it's the motion is coming down to be even with this line if i were to move it like this it would be a very harsh stop it would just smack okay it would just go to that point and there you go in fact it would actually speed up once it reached this and it needed to go right into it Okay, right into that line. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply a very small easy ease, okay? And the way we're going to do that is we're going to just rotate this down. And if I wanted a very large ease into that motion, okay, let's, uh, you know, for reference sake, let's go ahead and drag this out, okay? And, and let's play through this so that you can really see just how it slows down, okay? So you'll notice that it's going to go straight down to here and then start to really slow. Now watch what happens up in this viewport. It goes really fast and then it slows. Okay, you see how quickly that started to slow way down and ease into that keyframe? That's what that spline is doing. Alternately, let's move this straight up. Okay, and I'm going to take this other point because we're going to need to show you just how quickly it can jump okay ready now this is not going to ease into this point in fact it's going to go straight there and it's going to go very very quickly watch boom all right see the motion this is actually called an ease in so i'm easing into this motion and then once i get to this point it's just going to drop right into that keyframe so let's watch it again slowly and then smack okay so just by adjusting those curves, I'm affecting the motion, or rather, I'm affecting the character of this object and how it is moving, okay? So the way that I want to add this in is, let's go to this keyframe at the very end. And initially, because I want this to zoom in from the side, and I want it to come to a slowly slow a little bit slower stop but not all the way because what I'm gonna do is what's called an overlapping motion to create some anticipation that will then stop the glass and I'm gonna do that using this technique so 
let's move this back to frame 20. I'm going to select this keyframe here and I'm going to move the curve because I want it to instantly begin to move. But I also kind of want it to slow down just a little bit. That's why I moved this curve. You can see it has a very, very slight curve. All right. And when I play it, it's not really going to slow down a whole lot. You'll see it move just as hair. Okay. But now what I'm going to do is I want to show you that you don't need an entire easy ease from one motion to act as an ease out. I'm going to show you how we can use an overlapping motion that's going to act like the ease out. Okay, let me show you. And that's where the Z rotation is going to come from. So let's go ahead and click on the rotation. And I'm going to come over here and that's keyed out already for us. And I am going to just move the keyframe, all right? And I don't really care at this moment. I'm just going to block it out. And then we will adjust the timing in just a second. So I'm going to have this begin to rotate forward, okay? The idea is that the momentum of this coming in super fast is going to act as though this cup is going to fall over. And then we're going to create some anticipation. All right, we're anticipating that this is going to fall over, but we're really not going to have it fall over. But we we want to add just that little that little extra little hint. Okay, so we're going to rotate this just a little bit more. I mean, just a very small value. Okay, and then all right. And then we're going to move five more frames over and we're going to set this back to zero to make it flat. All right, because I, I want it to really anticipate like it's going to fall back over or fall over and then smack back. OK, and that's going to help add some extra character. All right. But let's take a look and see what this is doing. OK, because when we go to look at it, it's not going to look very pretty. All right, and that's because everything is linear on this. Okay, there's no smoothing of the curves. There's, there's nothing. All right, and the timing is also not where we want it. But let's just take a look at it and see what we have. Hmm. Okay, it doesn't look super fantastic, right? It's, it's kind of meh. It's got a little extra life. But this is where the fine tuning comes into play. Now. Inside the graph editor, if you hold down the middle mouse button, you can pan. And if you hold down the control key and you move your mouse wheel, you'll zoom in and out. Now, I'm going to zoom in just so that I can look at these keyframes here and then I can look at this curve. So the main thing I want to do is I don't want it to start rotating immediately. Okay, I know that. Okay, I want it to come in and then probably right about here. Uh, that's when I want the rotation to really begin. So I'm going to select this keyframe and just move it over. Okay, if you can <laughs> just grab the keyframe and start moving it over. Okay, so there's that. All right, now it's it's got a lock on that. Okay, next is I want to raise this up. Okay. Now, this is going to be a very quick rotation, remember, because we're not easing into the rotation. But then I want to ease into the full rotation, okay? I want to ease that motion, all right? So that's why I made that curve look like that, okay? So you notice now it kind of eased into that, all right? Then I'm going to come over to this frame here this next keyframe at uh, frame 38. And I want to just kind of increase the curve just a little bit, okay? I may even just line it up with this grid, all right? But then I'm going to take the other side, okay? And if I hold down control and I click on that handle, I'm going to break it, okay? All right? 
if I didn't do that, you'll notice that that other handle is going to go with it and it's going to do funky things. So if I hold down control and I click on that handle, I'm essentially breaking that handle. Okay. And I'm going to do that on purpose because I want that smooth arc. Okay. This is the anticipation. And then it's going to start to go back a little bit and then slam back down. Okay. So on this last keyframe, I'm going to move it so that it's almost vertical, right? So that it just slams into that. All right. So let's take a look and see what that looks like now. So there's a curve and it hits. Okay. Goes in and there you go. All right. Now we have a little, little, little oops. Okay you'll notice that it, it it's a little harsh right right when it gets to be about this key keyframe here that's a little harsh of a motion it, it looks like it just kind of doesn't quite uh, hit right so we're gonna change that by simply breaking this one too, breaking this keyframe or this handle and we're gonna raise it up just a little bit more Okay, and, and kind of smooth out this curve, right? If I move it down, that means that the rotation is not going to move as much, okay? Uh, so let's try that now. Let's see what that does. Uh, that's a little better. doesn't quite catch. There you go. So now what I've done is I've created a sec overlapping motion. The speed is coming in. The mug is going to hit that point. I'm starting to rotate like it's going to fall. Okay. It's going to move just a little bit more. Okay. That's what's called the anticipation. And then it slams back down. Okay. So right there in a mere 42 frames or 45 frames of animation, we have three principles of animation. The ease in and ease out or the ease out to the ease in to the motion we're creating the anticipate uh, creating an overlapping motion with that extra little bit of rotation going in we're anticipating with this extra little subtle more hint of rotation there and then the smack back down okay that's uh that is three principles of animation right there in one move Right, and what that did is it added a lot more character than just merely sliding in from point A to point B. The next step now is we need to create the 2D liquid. We need to fill this mug up with some beer, with some wonderful tasty brew. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to be doing that in the 2D realm. Now you'll notice that, uh, that this was a 3D scene. Okay, and we're going to keep the 3D scene because after we animate the liquid, we're going to be doing particles, which required a 3D scene. But for right now, we can work entirely in 2D. So the way that we're going to do this is I need to make a background and have a mask control the points to animate the liquid. Okay, so... What you're going to do is, because the render through 3D is rendering everything out into this 2D format, I can come over here and I can work with the 2D tools. And so up in this toolbar, these are kind of the most common tools that you'll use, or nodes. If I come over to MRG, which is short for merge, and I just click on it, it's going to add in a... 2D merge. Remember, this was a merge 3D. That's only for 3D objects. When you're working with the merge, the normal merge, which is not 3D, that means you're using it with 2D functions. Okay. So because the render is 2D, I'm going to merge it into this scene, but I need something else to merge into that. And that's going to be this background node. Okay. So if you're new to Fusion, the yellow input is your background. In fact, you can just hover your mouse over it and go, oh, that's the background. And then if you hover over the green, 
That's the foreground. Okay, so just like a normal layer, whatever goes on the bottom layer or the background, that's going to be the background. Whatever is on the foreground, well, you know, it's on the foreground. So I'm going to drag the background into the yellow input, and I'm going to grab this scene now, this render scene, into the green node. All right, because I want this on top, and I want the background to be the background. Now, you'll notice nothing changed. That's because we need to see this node. So, since we're going to be working in the 2D realm, I can take this merge node now, drag it up into the viewport, and there you go. Now I have this, these two things merged together, the cup and the background. So, click on the background node. I can choose a color, and this is since this is going to be essentially beer, um, and I personally like darker beer. Let's make it a darker uh, brown color. Okay. Uh, let's uh, not go quite uh, Guinness draught or stout. Let's, uh, hmm, what do you think? A good amber lager? Yeah, that sounds about good. Okay, so. Uh, let's just go ahead and click OK, and you'll notice that now the background's all brown. All right, so we're going to use this color as the color of our liquid. But what we're going to do is make a mask now that's going to be that we're going to animate as the liquid pouring into the mug. And the way we're going to do that is let's right click, go to Add Tool, go to Mask, and let's make a B spline mask mask so with this node selected let's take the output plug it into the blue or you could just drag it on top of the node of the background and it goes away and the reason why is because fusion is now wanting you to draw the mask so making sure that this node is still selected I can start adding points all right and you can notice that now if I just come in here that it's adding a mask of points. So what we're going to do is I want to kind of set this up with the just enough points to animate the liquid. Now it's very important if you've never animated with splines before that the fewer the points the easier it's going to be to animate. The trick is, is that you need to experiment enough to know just how many points you're going to need for that scene. Okay? So it, it's going to take a little bit of experimentation. So that's why what I like to do is I know I'm going to need two points. One and two. And then um, let's go ahead and the, add another point here. And since this is going to be filling up the glass and it's going to be going up, I'm going to add another point so that this point can be expanded over here. I want to keep one point on the bottom down here. So that means I got three there. So I should put three on the other side. And then let's close it. Okay. Now, if you all are not comfortable using a B spline because while this is all nice and all I I, I kind of like splines with handles that I can manipulate and you know really fine-tune and shape so the way you're gonna do that is if you right click and you go down to B spline polyline you can go and choose the option B spline to bezier and there you have it now you have a bezier curve and each one of these points has handles and now I can fine-tune and work on all these points individually okay so the way we're gonna do this is first and foremost let's look at our animation super quick okay we know we want the mug to come in and it's gonna slam back down okay and how much time do we want in between to start animating those points now Thankfully, we're not locked in, okay? We can animate the whole amount of liquid 
after this point. And then if we needed to start later, we can always go into our spline editor and move those keyframes over so that it can start later, it can start earlier, it's whatever feels right. You know, whatever is technically right and whatever matches the rhythm or the music or whatever the entire animation calls for. So, um, you know, as a happy medium, let's just start this on frame number 60 to have it start pouring in. So the way that we're going to do this is you'll notice that Fusion has actually already added a key frame. And that's because when we are on frame 40, uh, four, 45 here, um, I was messing around with the points. And whenever you add a mask in Fusion, it just assumes that you're going to be animating that mask. So it's already animating those properties. It's already set everything up for animation. I don't really have to do anything else, okay? Alternately, if you wanted to make sure that it really was animating, you can right click here and set the key and it will just start animating those properties for you. But it has already done that and I know that because it is blue, okay? If I come over to frame 45, it is green, that means there's a keyframe on that frame, okay? So, uh, because of that, let's go ahead and shape this frame. Let's kind of make the liquid a little bit thinner. And I'm going to select these last four points here. And not hit the right mouse button. Okay, we're going to select the last four points here. And we're going to drop this right down into the mug. All right? So if you look at it, there you go. Liquid is starting to pour. Let's go over to frame 80. And now it's going to splash. Okay, you know, it hits the bottom of the glass, the liquid needs to spread out, right? So we're going to just select, deselect, and just click on this frame here, or this point here, and we're going to move it over. Now, thankfully, because we are working with Bezier's curves, we can just adjust the curve, right? And what I'm probably going to do is I'm actually going to break the handle, okay? And uh, we'll do it on the next one, too. And this time, since we broke the handle there, now it's starting to come in. All right, and then what we're going to do is take these next two frames and let's let's bring them down, okay? And we'll take this frame because what I'm going to do is take these top ones here and we're going to be adjusting it so it looks like the liquid is not completely even the whole time that it's pouring. Um, like maybe there's some air gaps in there, you know, whatever it may be. Uh, but I want to at least ensure that as this is rising up that uh, uh, it doesn't have this funky curve down at the bottom. Okay, So we're going to move this down. Okay, And we're going to do the same for the other side. Oh, there's the point. Okay, And uh, let's, let's move that down closer to there and move that closer to that point and let's go down okay if you look at it now so let's let's adjust this curve a little bit uh, this is where f some fine tuning comes from but we'll worry about that in just a few okay let's keep going because we really want to start filling up this glass okay or this mug so the next thing is is obviously the liquid has to rise up okay so we're gonna take this point and let's just move it over to the side here and we're gonna use the mug itself to clip that you know since this is behind the mug it's it's gonna be able to hide these points okay and then let's take these points here okay that point this point this point that point okay or actually you know what just click and drag and let's let's start moving it up okay and let's be careful because remember this curve can 
or since we're working with curves, they could be a little wonky, but let's just break this curve. Hold down control, let's just break this curve so nothing weird is happening, okay? Now keep in mind, we're going to be making that particle system that's going to be covering up this section right here, right? Because you're pouring beer, the foam or the head of the is going to be forming at the top of the liquid. So our particle system is actually going to be helping to cover up this part right here, okay? So I'm going to kind of move the thing, the, the timeline over, okay? So I'm at frame 100 here. And if, since we're working in 30 frames per second, let's say it takes, uh, I don't know, maybe 60 frames to begin to rise uh, most of the way up, okay? Uh, that's probably not legit, uh, but again, we're not worried too much about the timing uh, because we can adjust it, okay? Uh, but we at least just want to be you know get something into the scene okay and then we'll work on it All right. so right now that looks pretty good we're gonna drop it in that fills up great okay it's actually filling up that's fantastic alright so it looks a little wonky right there we'll fix that but that fills up and now the next thing I want to do is I'm gonna come over to frame 180 and I am going to add the little extra drips. So now we want to take these two splines here and we're going to adjust this. But what I'm going to do is we're going to add some drops and the way we're going to do that is go ahead and just pinch. Just just pinch the spline, okay? And um, you know it we can add in some extra drops later on to the animation, but for right now, this is a good little kind of a cheat because the motion is going to be going so fast anyways. It'll kind of look like drops, you know, like the extra little drops of, of beer that, that continue to pour out, you know. So we'll just kind of clip it like that, and then we'll go back over maybe 10 more frames and let's just bring this down all the way so that it's sitting on top. Let's adjust this curve. Okay. All right. And now let's move this over. Okay. So now the entire liquid is inside of the beer mug. So right now, if we look at our animation, it really just feels like it's chocolate syrup. You know, it really doesn't feel like it has the same viscosity properties as beer. Okay, it just looks like a thick syrup. So, since we've blocked in what we want this to do now, let's go ahead and start to fine tune this. Now, we're going to fine tune it using none other than the graph editor. So, let's go ahead and click on the spline editor. And then over in your options in your list here, uh, go ahead and click on the B spline because that's what we were animating on. And you'll see that there is nothing here. And all you have to do is just start to zoom out. So hold down control, move your mouse wheel, and you can start to zoom out. And now you'll see that uh, our splines are here. So the first thing to cover here is, you know, every frame that we have done a shape animation on is represented here. So what I like to do is you'll notice that all of these are very linear, right? Straight line, straight line, straight line. So what we could do is select all of them. And then if you come up to your options here, this one will straighten out the curves. This one will smooth it. Okay. This will do a step in. Okay, you'll notice that it'll stair step it. And what that means is that if you look at the animation, you'll see nothing because until it gets to this point, now it's going to pop in. And then the next one, that's going to pop. And then the next one's going to pop. And the next one's going to pop. Now, if I were doing sort of a stop motion style animation, 
this would be similar to how I would do the keyframes. But that's not what we're going to do. We need to smooth this out. Okay, so come over here, make sure they're all selected, and let's click on the smooth. All right, and that's basically just going to smooth all of the lines. Okay, so now if we watch it, you're not going to see too much of a difference, but it will look a little bit smoother and not as harsh. So the next thing that we're going to do is we need to adjust the timing of the overall liquid. All right, right now it's pretty even. And the way that we're going to do that is when you are working with a shape animation, such as the B spline, you'll notice that in Fusion, I can move all of these left and right, but I can't move them up and down. Okay, and that's because we're not working with values such as height or, or width, okay? Um, we're not moving the position of the actual shape itself. What we're doing is morphing the points. And so Fusion is just recording the shape of the points, not their height values or their width values, just the shape, okay? So that's why we can only move them, move the shape closer, you know, you can move the keyframe closer to the other keyframe or move it over, whatever the case may be, but the whole point is that it's only recording the shape animation. Now, with that in mind, what we're going to do is we're going to just adjust the timing. So right now, I could tell you that I don't like the speed by which it falls, okay? I also don't like this part right here, okay? You see how it just thickly kind of lumps down here? All right, that's just kind of gives it an indication. It kind of looks like chocolate and then it raises up and you'll notice as I zoom in here that uh, this needs to fill up the glass here, okay? And then overall, the speed of everything really just needs to be a little bit tighter, okay? So starting with the first keyframes, I'm actually going to go to this keyframe here and I'm just gonna move it forward, all right? I'm gonna move it closer to the other keyframe. All right, because I, I really want it to come down fairly quick. And the other thing, too, is that since I'm working with curves, I can adjust my curves as needed. All right. And so let's uh, let's do some scrubbing. OK, remember, when you're doing animation, you're going to scrub through the timeline a lot. OK, all right. That feels a little bit better. I like the speed by which it comes down now. And so now we need to fix a couple of points here. So what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and keep moving the keyframes towards one another. So we're going to move this here. Okay. And then what we need to do is adjust this liquid that's coming down. Okay. Because it really just plops. All right. And so coming into this keyframe, what we're going to do is I want this to come down sooner. All right, I want the points to come down much faster. So you'll notice I'm not on a keyframe, kind of in the middle, but what I'm going to do is take these points, okay, and let's add another keyframe by merely pushing these down, okay, and that's going to help kind of get rid of that plopping. All right. And then what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and move these over. Let's, let's check the animation. Uh, that looks much better now. And now it's spreading out. But you know what? Let's, let's help this along a little bit more. Let's move this point. Let's move this point. And let's get rid of this mound shape. So we're going to do that by holding down control and we're going to break that handle. Okay. And this is kind of a funky shape too, so let's just adjust the handles on this. All right, and now let's take a look at it. There we go, that looks a lot better. All right, let's watch it in real time. Let's just hit spacebar and play. All right, remember if you hit spacebar in Fusion, it'll play the timeline. All right. All right. That's looking a lot better. But now we have to deal with this open space. 
All right, and the easiest way to do that is just go to the keyframe that you don't have where you see that, and let's just adjust the points. All right, we need to get them over faster. All right, so you'll notice that my handle is moving both sides, so let's just break that by holding down control, and again, let's let's just even this up. Okay, let's do it on the other side over here. Let's just move this over, and I'm going to break this because I want to make sure that it's pointing up. Okay, so I don't get any weird curves here. Let's do it to that. All right, so let's check out uh, what this is doing now. So let's just hit spacebar. All right, it's taking a while to get up there, but let's check it. Yeah, that's looking better. Okay. And one more time for good measure. Okay. So now that we've gotten that part, this needs to fill up faster. And again, that's because this keyframe from here to here is quite long. So let's go ahead and bring these back closer to one another. All right, because I'm speeding up that time. All right, let's take a look. Okay, so I like the timing a little bit better, but you'll notice that it, it, it kind of uh, pauses right there. Right, like it's not filling up fast enough. Let's go ahead and fix that. And I'm going to adjust the value of these points. And I'm just going to raise them forward. If I use my arrow keys, I can move these points up and down. So I'm just going to raise them up and down a little bit. Let's see. Okay, good. Now, keep in mind that we're going to be creating that fizz. And so we don't have to have this part perfect, or nor do we need to animate a lot of that line, okay? I could come in here and do splashes and everything, but since we're going to have that fizz come up, or the, the foam of the head come up, um, that's going to be covering all of that. So that's looking fairly decent right now, okay? The, the other thing is uh, the little drop at the end. Let's uh, let's move that closer to each other as well. Let's let's clean up that time. All right, let's just move it over. And let's really zoom in far. Notice that. Uh, select that. I don't want it to. Uh, I want it just to come straight down. I don't need it to ease into that fall. Okay, so I'm going to move that curve down. Okay, and let's take a look. Uh, it looks a little bit better. Still a little slow though. So let's uh, let's adjust this value here. Okay. Don't be afraid to get too close to the keyframes. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Now the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to add in another shape animation here. So going fairly close to that last keyframe, what we want to do is look like it's going to kind of wave across the surface. So let's bring this point down. All right. Since we know that this dropped down into here, let's move this up. So we know it dropped down, so let's make a little crater here, adjust the uh, curve, and let's bring this up, bring that down, same with over here, let's bring this up, all right, and I kind of I kind of like the little wavy look, I don't, it doesn't have to be perfect, okay, and then let's come over another keyframe, again, we'll adjust the timing on this, but now we want to move this up, this down some more and bring this up along the edges because now the waves have rippled and they have met the edges of the cup. Okay. 
and then come over again. Let's bring it straight back down. Let's bring that up. Those down. Okay. Bring that down. Bring that up. And then move over a little bit more. And let's start to even out all of these lines. Okay. Remember, we're kind of giving the subtle hint of liquid. We're not actually doing accurate liquid animation. This is uh, completely stylized. And also, there's still going to be some foaming at the top here uh, with that head and the particles spilling over. So you're not going to see a whole lot of this. But just in case the, uh, the particle system has gaps in it from where it's shooting all those particles out, as long as we see some motion behind there, it'll actually look uh, a little more like a complete animation. So let's just take a look at what we created there. Okay, now that we have our liquid animated, let's work on the last part of this animation. And that's going to be creating these particle systems. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange this flow graph real quick. I'm going to go ahead and move these over. Okay. And then I'm going to move these over because I need to tie in the particle system into these, this 3D scene. Okay, and the way we're going to do this is first and foremost, let's go ahead and create a particle emitter. So if you right click, go to add tool, go to particles, and go to P emitter. All right. And then when you're working with particles in Fusion, you're going to need a particle renderer. So let's add a tool, go to particles, and go to P render. Let's connect these two nodes together. And you'll see that now I have a particle system. But in, it is in 3D. So we need to merge it with the rest of the scene. So we're going to tie it right into this merge 3D. So let's go ahead and drop that in there. Okay. You'll notice now it's rendering out these particles as points. Okay. So that's step number one. The next thing that we need to do is we're going to be using a bubble texture bitmap for these particles. So clicking on your P emitter node, go over to style and under style, click on bitmap and watch what happens down there. You're going to see that it's going to create an input node. All right. Because now it's asking for a bitmap and you'll also notice that our point renderer went away. So let's go to add tool, go to IO and click on loader. And then let's click on the bubble final PNG. Okay, let's take a look at this. All right, see that it's a bubble. All right, but you'll notice that there's a white background behind there. Now I know for certain that this does have a transparency. So in, whenever you bring in a PNG into Fusion, it's go, go ahead and click on import under this node and make sure that this post multiply by alpha is selected. And then that way you'll be able to see your transparency. Okay, little handy tip. Now let's connect that into the P emitter and now you'll see that it is in fact spawning a bunch of bubbles. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and style some of the emitter properties. Okay. We're going to do this in several phases. Okay. So the first step is we need to change the region. So let's, let's move this over and to make this simpler and easier for us to see what we're doing, take the three merge 3d node and move it into here. Okay. So that away, now we see all of our elements or the most important element, which is the mug. So under the P emitter node, go to region and change the region from sphere to rectangle. Okay. So you notice that it created a rectangle. But what I want to do is I, I want the Z axis or the blue to be pointing up because I want it to emit this way. All right. Because when I change the width, height, 
Now, I want it to be wider because as I change the width, I, I that's that's nice that it's doing that, but I I really want that plane to be going this horizontally instead of vertically. So the way we're going to do that is go over to your X rotation and because I like to have things clean, I like to have all my axes continuing pointing in a positive direction. Just rotate the X axis negative 90 and that's going to allow me to have my Z axis or Z axis pointing straight up. Next we need to move this offset, okay? Because I need it to line up in the middle of the mug. So taking your X axis, we can actually just move it. And I want it kind of roughly in the center of the mug. Okay. Then under the width, let's go ahead and apply some width to that. All right. You'll probably see some of it uh, sticking out from behind the mug. Okay. So we're going to change the size of these in just a second. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to raise this up. I'm going to get it up off the floor. All right, or the grid. And then let's mess with the size of this, okay? So under your size controls in the style tab, let's change the overall size of this down, okay? Because what, we, what we're trying to establish here is the overall size, the maximum size that we want these to be, okay? So going with that, we want to make sure that these are also behind here, okay? And the great thing is, is now you can see that the bottom or the mug is clipping off these particles. That's exactly what we want, okay? And let's go ahead and let's come back over here or to the uh, region region tab and I want to adjust the width just a little bit more so they kind of fill up the entire mug there. That's good. Alright, and I'm just going to bring this down some. Okay, now we need to animate this particle system going up. Okay, because as this mug fills, obviously we want the top of this to be covered with that head as it goes up. And then we're going to have it spill over the side, and you're going to see them land on the floor and then ultimately be done. So the way we're going to do that is, under your particle emitter, let's take a look at when they need to start. Okay? Because right now, uh, they're starting at frame zero. Okay? They're starting right here. And that doesn't look right because the liquid needs to be poured into the mug before they start. So the way we're going to handle that is let's come over to our animation and let's just see when a good time would be for them to form. And that looks to be right around frame 60 is when they really need to start spawning. So under your controls, let's set the number down to zero first. And just like in all the other properties in Fusion, I can right click and go to animate, letting Fusion know that I'm going to start animating this property, or I can double click this light bar. All right, so let's just go ahead and set the animation number. And then coming over to frame 62, we can see that it's starting to animate a little bit more. Let's just go ahead and increase that number to 10. So now when we play this, it's going to start forming those bubbles, okay? So comes down, great. So they're just staying at the bottom now though, and we need those to move up. So the easiest way to do that is come over to your region, okay? This region here. Let's animate this value. and I'm going to jump ahead here real quick because one of the things I'm going to do is not only is this going to come up, but 
when I get to the top here, I'm going to want the bubbles to come up and go over the top of this. And the easiest way to control that is if I move, physically move this render region forward, okay, along the Z axis here, all right? Because that's gonna force it to really come out in front of the mug as the particles come down. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell Fusion I want to animate the Z offset as well, okay? So starting at frame 63, we're gonna start moving the Y offset. So double click this, we're gonna just go ahead and create another keyframe. And then come over to just when it gets to the top. Okay, we're going to see our liquid over here coming right to that top. That's basically when it stopped. And now what we're going to do is take this, and you'll see it's stretching. All that, the head is stretching with that beer mug. And we're going to come to right about the top there. Okay. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to double click or tell this, I'm going to start animating the Z offset. And then coming over just a little few more frames, we're going to physically move this in front of the beer mug. Okay? All right, so now you can see that the bubbles are in front of the beer mug, whereas if I went back behind here, you'll notice that they're being clipped off by the graphic. Okay. All right, so taking a look at this, you can see that it's filling up the glass, but that's all they're doing, right? There's nothing else here. So what we want now is we need to have these fall down, okay? Um, and we also want them to land on the floor. So we're going to be editing this particle emitter. So right clicking and going to add tool, go to particles. Let's work on the gravity. So if you go to your P directional force, this is going to act as though it's your gravity. So the way that you want to affect these emitters is that when you're messing with particles, you need to do everything before the particle renderer. So I'm going to take this node and hold down shift and between the P emitter node and the P render node, I'm going to highlight this. I'm just going to move it over the top of this wire. And when you see it change colors like this, just let go of the mouse button and there you go. It's now connected and you'll see that now this is updated with that particle direction. Okay. With this force. And when I play it, you'll see that it's all falling straight down, okay? Now, we know that we don't want that to happen immediately, okay? Because we want it to fill up the glass. But when it gets to the top, that's when we want it to really start to overflow, okay? So let's go to our particle emitter and let's examine, make sure that we select that because I want to make sure that as soon as it gets to the top, that's when I want the directional force to kick in. Okay, so I'm going to make sure that my keyframe is right at the top there. Okay. And then under the directional force, let's add a keyframe on the strength. So right click and click on animate. And I'm going to set this to zero. Okay, because again, I don't want it affecting until it gets to the top. So now that it's not doing anything, let's come over here to the next frame, basically 124, and let's increase the strength that this is going to affect everything at. And we'll do it to 0.1. Okay, that's actually a pretty safe number. So now when you watch, it doesn't affect, and now it's starting to move down. 
So the next thing that we want to look at is if you look closely, you know, our particles are going down below the floor, our imaginary floor. And I don't want that. I actually want them to rest on that floor. All right. And the way that we're going to do that is very simple inside of Fusion. If we right click and go to Add Tool, go to Particles, and go to Bounce. Okay. What this is going to do is it's going to set up a region that's going to basically uh, collide, make our particles collide with an imaginary mesh, okay? Or an invisible mesh. So again, particle emitter, we put that directional force in and we put that in before the particle render. So again, we're gonna do the same thing with the particle bounce. If I click on the node and move it, and then hold down shift, go move the mouse cursor over the wire, let go of the mouse button, it now affects this flow right here. Okay, so let's look at the properties of our bounce. Okay, so you can see that it created an origin here. But if we go to our region, right now it's just a line, but that's not going to affect our particles. So we're going to click on line and go to rectangle. And again, just like the rectangle on the P emitter, it's going vertically. I actually want it to be a floor. So with our X rotation on our bounce emitter, let's make that a negative 90, because again, I'm moving it backwards and I want the Z axis to go up. Then under our width, you'll notice that I can make that go to one, but on several properties inside of Fusion. You can go higher than that if you just type in the value that you want. And I'm going to change that to a 5 because I know no particles are going to ever go that far. But it's good to have a little extra space. And then on the height, I'm going to set the same value. Okay, so now we have an entire floor. And lo and behold, you'll notice that our, our uh, particles have been clipped off. Okay, and that's because they're bouncing. So let's go ahead and play. And, and let's watch what happens with the bounce. Okay, so they come up, they're coming up. All right, and now they come down and you'll notice that you can see some of them are really bouncing back up. And then they're gonna come back down and bounce and bounce and bounce and bounce and bounce, okay? So we don't want that, okay? We want the, the foam to hit and not bounce because it just needs to move away, right? Because there's no elasticity to the bounce itself or to the foam itself. So under the bounce emitter, go to controls and under elasticity, just move that down to zero. And then we can increase the roughness. You know, this is this is just going to when when they finally hit that floor, how far are they going to roll away from the origin point? Okay, and and I'm going to set it to probably around seven, just as a good even number. Okay, and so let's watch and see what that does now. Uh, we don't we don't have to do the whole particle animation. Let's just go to frame 114, and that way we can just watch from there. Okay, and you'll notice that as it comes down, they're going to start rolling away. Okay, so, so far, this is not too shabby. Okay, this is not too bad. But we have a problem, right? We don't want the bubbles to be completely that big, right? And we also don't want them filling up this much inside the glass, okay? Uh, so let's style those. So clicking on the P emitter, I know that foam doesn't immediately just start out super huge, right? It has smaller bubbles to larger bubbles and then small again. So the way we're going to do that is clicking on the P emitter. Let's go to the controls and then, or sorry, the style tab. And under your size controls, there is a graph editor down here, okay? And so what this is, is just like in your spline editor, you can add points and you can 
manipulate those points with handles and curves. So I'm going to click in the middle of this line and to add a point. Okay. And then I'm going to move this up just a smidge. Okay. That's going to actually increase the size of the bubbles, right? But I don't want to increase them too much. I just want there to be a, a point there so that when I come over to the beginning of the life, okay, as when they're starting to spawn, I want them to be zero, okay? And you'll notice that now they're starting out very, very small, okay? And the same thing, over the course of the life, I want them to disappear, okay? So now, if I click on this point and move this down, they're going to get smaller too as they fade away and die. Okay? You can see that you can see them getting smaller as they extend out. Okay? So the next thing that we can do is let's adjust the curve. Okay? All right, so we can bring this down, and just like what we learned about in the graph editor. When we add a curve like this, it's going to ease in to the size of their life. And the same way over here is I'm going to ease in to the size of which they are born. Actually, let's, uh, let's change that. I want them to be fairly, fairly quick. And then at the top here, let's uh, ease to the size of them. And then we're going to ease them to slowly then begin to die off. Okay? So let's take a look at that animation. All right, started at the very beginning. You'll notice that, yeah, they're starting to fill up. Right? But they're, they're also staying there for a fairly long time. And there's also not a lot of them. Okay? We, we want a lot of stuff. Okay? So let's... I think these are too small in the very beginning. Let's just increase the size by which they are born. Okay. All right. That's going to help out quite a bit. But the next thing that we want to do is they really are lasting a long time inside of here. Okay. And that's because their lifespan is too long. This is the number of frames by which they are living. So let's change that to, let's say, 60, okay? You'll notice now that they are, when they come up, they're going to start fading off sooner rather than later. And now they're going to drop back down, okay? So we need to handle a couple things here. One is that we need a lot more particles. Okay, so the original number that we set needs to be higher. Okay, so in our case, let's set that to 25 at this key frame. Okay, so what I did is I went back to the number, and anytime that you see a value in green, that means you're on a key frame. So I just set that to 25. So now I'm going to have even more particles coming in. Okay, that's really going to fill it all the way up. Okay, but now what I want to do is I want to create some velocity. Okay, in these particles. Okay, and I also want to set set it so that they kind of expand out. Okay, so the way we're going to do that is once we get to the top, once the emitter gets to the very top. Let's go to our velocity controls and let's set this velocity to 0 0.05. All right, I want them to move up. Okay, but you notice that they just kind of moved on the x axis. Okay, so one of the helpful tips is inside of Fusion here, as soon as you start messing with the velocity, it's going to be doing it along the x axis. But we want to change that. And we can do that by setting the angle. Okay. So in our case, I want them shooting straight up. If this is zero and we work our angles, 
the angle is going to go up like this, so we need to set that to 90. Okay? So now that they're at 90, let's take a look at that animation. And you'll notice that now they're pushing up above the glass, which I don't mind. I actually don't mind that. It's, it's adding a little bit of extra uh, life to the animation that way. And it looks like this, there's a lot going on in there. Okay, So the next thing that we're going to do is I want some variance on that angle though. All right? I don't want them just coming up and then going straight back down. Since we're going for a little bit more of a style here, I want some of these particles so I want some of them coming out this way, I want some of them going out this way, I want some of them going down. And so we can achieve that by going to the angle variance. And if you click on your mouse button and you drag, you'll notice that I'm starting to get some variance in that angle. Okay. And let's set that to about 85, right? Okay, good. So let's come back and you'll notice that it's also, I only want it to when they start to get up to there, okay? As soon as they get to the top, that's when I want that angle variance to happen. Okay, so let's come over to our keyframe here because our emitter came up, it came up and it reached 127, okay? So let's add a keyframe at that angle variance. So let's double click that. Let's set that to zero, okay? Because we don't want that angle to affect as it's going up. We only want it to affect it when it gets to the top. So at 127, we set the angle variance to zero. Let's move the keyframes over to probably about 135 and let's set that now to 85 okay and what that's going to do is start to add in that variance over time there okay now you'll see that our particles are going over the top of that but they're not ending right um, so the next thing that we got to do is we want the particles to end. So there you go. That's building up and it's coming over the top. But now we got to get rid of them. Okay. Uh, they're lasting way too long. So we want them to spill over and then right around frame 180. Okay. Let's go to the number value again. And let's set that number, let's set a keyframe on that number. Okay, we're gonna double click that. Okay, and then at frame 183, let's just set that to zero. Okay. Now, let's play that. Let's see what happens. So that's coming up spills over the edge and then it's going to stop emitting and the rest of them are going to go away. Okay, let's take a look and see that in real time. Okay. Coming up in real time, spilling over the edge. Yeah, I like that. I can live with that. Okay, so that looks pretty good. All right, and now let's do one more last little setting, okay? Right now, all of the particles are living at the same time, okay? Their lifespan is always 60. But if we want to add a little bit more variation, we can change the variance of that lifespan, okay? So if we increase this value, some of the particles will live longer, some of them will live shorter you know it's just going to add enough variance inside of there to kind of make it a little bit feel a little bit more random okay 
So just said that, you know, you can play with that value. This really is, you know, the point in the animation where you're just kind of refining things and trying to really just, you know, use artistic license at this point. So let's just go ahead and play that. And let's just take a look and see what it's doing. You know, I'm actually pretty happy with that. You know, this, uh, this looks pretty good. You know, we can watch this in real time here. And now we have a tasty mug of brew. So the last step in this animation is we're going to create a background. All right, because right now it's all transparent back here and we just need to have it as a background. So what we could do is right click, go to add tool, go to creator, and let's create a background. All right. We could also create a merge node, and we could do that simply by clicking on the merge up here. Okay, this toolbar right here is just has some more common ones that uh, you would normally use inside of Fusion. So if I wanted to also make a background node, I can just click on background as well. But for ease of use, let's just click on merge. And let's drag this into here. Okay, now we need to merge this scene into this scene. And so the easiest way to do it is, just like on the merge tool, this is the background, this is the foreground. Let's move the background into the yellow. And then let's take this scene and move it into the green. Okay, and now if we move that up into there, you'll notice that I don't have a transparency anymore. It's actually a black background. So clicking on this background node, let's change the color, right? We can pick a fun color here. We can make that orange, or we can also set gradients, horizontal, vertical, four colored gradients, you know, whatever it may be, okay? So in our case, um, let's just make it easy for us. Let's uh, click on the vertical tab. So nice little gradient. And there you have it. Well, that about wraps up our tutorial today. I hope you all learned a lot of really good techniques using Fusion. We covered how to bring in 2D images, how to animate those using spline editors. We learned a few principles of animation. We also learned some shape animation inside of Fusion with the beer falling into the glass, and then of course wrapping it all up with a very fun particle system. If you like these tutorials, please like and subscribe to my channel to stay updated on when I release new ones. And with that being said, be inspired, keep pushing those pixels, and I'll see you all in the next tutorial.